presentation so that we can post it later. Okay, so and we will also talk about some case studies in different countries, how, how it is being managed, for example, in South Korea or other countries. And uh, and the main thing is Mythbusters. So th this is where uh, we will we will focus a bit more because there are a lot of lot of fake news, and uh, and also Anand is this kind of specialist in alternative medicine, so he knows quite a lot about things. So he will talk about it. Uh, I mean, the first thing what I forgot to introduce is that I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Dr. Jagdish Ganga. I work as an accelerator program manager in a in an organization called EIT Health, a European Union organization. So we are into healthcare. And we look at all the healthcare trends that's happening across Europe. We help startups. We we educate public about healthcare, uh, how to how to take care of themselves. For example, the elderly people, how how they should take care of themselves at home, and and a lot of other projects we deal with. So uh, that's kind of a base. And I'm gonna just show you a disclaimer. So whatever we are showing today, it's nothing should be taken for granted because none of them are medical doctors we are all phd doctors so we 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 also read stuff only thing is that we understand stuff in a different way uh, because we studied that in our bachelor's masters in phds so don't take our suggestion whatever we take as as a medication so you need to really see this as just an information purpose so we are there here to support you information uh, give you information but nothing prescribing any medicine so this is the big big disclaimer that we want to make mainly hydrochloroquine hydroxychloroquine as a prophylactic treatment because in india when i talk to people people are taking hydroxychloroquine as a prophylactic treatment that means they take one tablet per week to prevent uh, coronavirus but according to icmr guidelines it's strictly prohibited so so that's why that's why like whenever you hear things please hear it properly and we are not recommending anything here, please, please. Okay. And uh, so, I mean, it's uh, we 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 are for like everybody are following coronavirus statistics. So it's it's really scary. So I mean, day before yesterday when I saw it was like three hundred thousand cases, and today it's five hundred and I mean thirty thousand plus cases, and there are twenty four thousand plus deaths. It's it's scary actually. Like whenever you go out. You really don't know whether you are safe or not. Even when you are at home, you are safe or not. So it's really scary. And it's, it started from China. It went to Europe and now it's in India. It's like more than 150 plus countries. So, I mean, this is like the, I'm kind of setting the base now and I would like my friends to take care, to take over. So I will just introduce them. So in, in the presentation, we have uh, Shenmukha Kumar, Dr. Shenmukha Kumar, PhD. He's currently a postdoc at Heidelberg, and we have Dr. Ananda Krishna Vemuri from uh, Hyderabad. He's a uh, he finished his PhD and now he's working as a healthcare consultant for a couple of uh, doctors. So he will take over now and he will explain you a couple of things. Anand, please unmute yourself. So let me just unmute. You. Okay, go ahead, Anand. Share your screen. Yeah, share my screen. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah, and one more so, thing like if you have any questions please drop them in the in the chat window so once we are done with the presentation we will be happy to answer that so uh okay i'll start with coronavirus uh introduction to the coronavirus so we are hearing a lot about this coronavirus or sars cov 2 so what is this coronavirus that is creating so much of a pandemonium and fear in people so coronavirus disease or COVID-19 as the WHO wants to call it, or SARS-CoV-2, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome like Coronavirus 2, is a viral infectious disease caused by a newly discovered virus from the Coronaviridae family. It's not a, a new uh, organism from a completely uh, new family or so. Coronaviridae family exists and there are uh, more than 100 different viruses in that family and this is a newly discovered one. Researchers have identified, this is very important, researchers have identified two strains of this virus. There are two strains that exist actually, of which the parent strain is less lethal, affects 30% of the people, while the mutated strain, it is adapted due to the selection pressure, obviously it has to adapt. So it is highly virulent and it affects the 70% of the people. 
So virologists from USA have identified that COVID-19 virus had high sequence similarity with the coronavirus, coronaviruses found in bats, thereby debunking, uh, debunking the myth that is going on that the virus is a bioweapon. You must have heard this. And uh, the virus is thought to have jumped species from an intermediate host, most likely a pangolin. So it's an ant-eating animal. So most trafficked animal illegally from a wet market in Wuhan city of Hubei province, People's Republic of China. The wet markets, though illegal, are allowed in the Chinese constitution, citing lack of sufficient uh, food as a primary reason. The close proximity of various exotic animals like bats, civet cats, snakes, pangolins, they are stacked one on top of the other or one beside the other. So there is a huge chance that it can jump species from one uh, jump. The viruses can jump from one species to another. So the first COVID-19 outbreak was seen in the month of November 2019 not in the month of December, November, but the vital information was muzzled by the Chinese Communist Party for around eight weeks, closer to two months. And the virus started sickening the people who were arriving, arriving by the millions into their native places on the eve of Chinese Lunar New, New Year. The virus poses a public health emergency in the entire human population on this planet, all the six billion human population on this planet. You can see the electron micrograph showing the particles of coronavirus budding out of the host cell. So coming to the symptoms, so the, the first symptom that many people who have recovered from the uh, disease from Italy or so, they explain it is that they'll have a throbbing headache, you know, as if somebody is beating it with a sledgehammer or something. And then these are the sinuses. You have the sinus problem, huge sinus problem. And then you have cough, dry cough. And then the most important one being the shortness of breath. So if you encounter this particular symptom, shortness of breath, as if you are unable to breathe anything. So then that means that probably you might have corona and go to a, a healthcare consultant. You'll also have muscle pain. You'll have fear, fever, tiredness. That is what is called as malaise or general weakness in medical terms. So the virus seems to start with a fever followed by a dry cough. And then after a week or so, it leads to shortness of breath. Actually, uh, according to ICMR, it starts within the four days. After four days, it enters into the lungs and then it causes shortness of breath. Other symptoms include aches and pains, sore throat, and very few people will report diarrhea, nausea, or a runny nose. Runny nose is not a symptom of regular symptom of coronavirus, not even influenza virus. It is a symptom of rhinovirus, basically. So this, this uh, image shows fever, cough, shortness of breath. The symptoms may appear two to 14 days after exposure. So seek medical advice if you develop the symptoms. If, or if you have been in close contact with any person, you know, who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. Anant, uh, uh, maybe like, so I would like to interfere there because people, uh, I am getting messages that people have headache, people have cold and they're and shortness of breath and they're getting confused with not, with, between normal flu and, and coronavirus. Maybe stress a bit between the differences or do you have a, I think you have an extra slide, right? Yeah. Oops. We have an extra slide for that yeah. to discuss. Okay, cool. We have an extra slide for that. At least I'll show what uh, pneumonia looks like. For example, imagine this is a sponge. Okay, this is your lung. Okay, this is the empty spaces are filled with air. Now I'm able to compress it and uncompress it easily. Okay, imagine this filled with water. Okay, if it is filled with water, then can the air enter because the empty spaces are already filled with water. So the air cannot enter. The same thing happens in pneumonia with your lungs. So you cannot uh, breathe properly and that leads to shortness of breath. I'll also show it with a instrument physically. It is called as pulse oximeter. So all the doctors know this, but people who are not in the medical profession, I'm showing it uh, easily. So I put my finger here and uh, a laser uh, detects my oxygen saturation as well as my breathing rate and uh, my beats per minute. If you can see, it is showing it as 98. So since I don't have any uh, fever or anything or any problem in my oxygen saturation, now it is showing it as 98. Now it is even 100%. So it is 100% uh, percent of saturation and my uh, uh, breathing uh, capacity is 14 uh, breaths per minute. So that is uh, the uh, breathing rate, 14 breaths per minute. And uh, this one is the 
uh, heartbeat so whereas in the patients instead of this 100% or 98% which is normal in patients it will go down to 75% because of the accumulation of fluid in the lungs so because of that they'll have to take more number of breaths to take the same amount of oxygen so that causes a huge problem and i'll be explaining in a few slides so let me uh, quickly go through the sequence of events on 31st of december uh, 2019 the wuhan Mun municipal health commission in wuhan city hubei province china reported a cluster of 27 pneumonia cases including seven severe cases of unknown etiology etiology is nothing but you don't know what is the organism that is causing it you don't know what is the mode of transmission nothing so with a common reported link to wuhan's hunan seafood wholesale market that is all they know a wholesale fish and live animal market the market was closed down on 1st january 2020 Cases showed symptoms such as fever, dry cough, dysopnea. Radi radiological findings showed bilateral lung infiltrates. So you had fluid in the lungs. And 9th January 2020, the China Center for Disease Control, CCDC, reported that a novel coronavirus, later named as SARS-CoV-2, the virus causing COVID-19, had been detected as a causative agent of 15 out of the 59 cases of pneumonia. On 10th January 2020, the first novel coronavirus genome sequence was made publicly available. And by 20th January, there were confirmed cases in three countries outside China, Thailand, Japan, and South Korea. These cases had all been exported from China because people moved out of the Hubei province. And 23rd January 2020, the Wuhan city was completely shut down, locked down, with all travel in and out prohibited, and the movement inside the city was restricted. So again, the continuation, 24th January, the first European case was uh, reported in France. And this case had a travel history to China. And in Germany, the cases were reported on 28th of January related to a person visiting from China. On 30th January, 2020, the World Health Organization, WHO, declared this first outbreak of novel coronavirus a public health emergency of international concern. Remember this, a public health emergency of international concern. During the following weeks, it, it did not declare it as a pandemic even then. So during the following weeks, several countries implemented entry screening measures like infrared scanners to check the anomalies of body temperature. You must have seen in the news that uh, screening devices at airports for the passengers arriving from China. Soon, several major airlines suspended their flights from and to China. Several countries repatriated citizens from Wuhan with India evacuating maximum number of its stranded citizens along with citizens of Bangladesh, Maldives, and Bhutan with, with its neighborhood first policy. They were quarantined at the Indo-Tibetan Border Police, ITBP quarantine facility in Manesar, outskirts of New Delhi. The World Health Organization, WHO, on March 11th, a one and a half month after the first advisory, it declared COVID-19 a pandemic, pointing to over 1,18,000 or uh, 118,000 cases of the coronavirus illness in over 110 countries and territories around the world and a sustained risk of further global spread. Now, uh, people will have a question. What is the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic? So let me explain briefly. Epidemic is nothing but the spread of a disease within a specific country or group of countries, but within a continent. It has not spread to other continents. Whereas a pandemic, it's uncontrollable spread of a pathogen globally with a sudden exponential rise in cases. So you will be seeing those slides uh, after a few minutes. Anand, so uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just to the previous slide i just want to add one point on this uh, pandemic uh, one so actually yeah. why 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 who took long time from 30 of january to march 11 to declare this as pandemic actually i was looking for this information and came across like it kind of alerts all the administrative capacity of all the countries you know or the national or international globe health emergencies to introduce new laws to contain this pandemic you know this is where all the governments failed collectively because it took for them to conclude from Jan one and a half month to declare the pandemic. If this was done before itself, all the governments, all the you know international governments, global countries would have implemented laws to contain this pandemic. This is where it failed actually. This is one of the reasons why you know the disease is spreading like this now. Yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. So let me give you a brief structure of coronavirus. This coronavirus, it has a spike protein. It has an, it is an enveloped virus. It belongs to a group of enveloped viruses. So you have an envelope. It's a bilayer envelope. It is taken from the host cell. So you have a spike glycoprotein S. You have envelope protein E and a membrane protein M. It is a 
virio uh, it's also called as virioporin this particular proteins uh, you find in other uh, enveloped viruses also it's called virioporin and uh, you have rna genome this is the envelope the whole thing is the envelope and the rna genome the nucleocapsid as we call it inside the envelope there is a nucleocapsid this nucleocapsid is just like our if you if anybody knows the human dna it's just like a bead on a string it just rolls and rolls and rolls and uh, the nucleocapsid within the nucleocapsid the rna just rolls in that's it so the genome size va varies approximately between 27 to 34 kilo bases and uh, this is a positive sense single stranded rna genome okay so let me explain what is a positive sense rna positive sense rna indicates that it is already in 5 prime to 3 prime direction and it can directly encode the proteins it doesn't need to convert from 3 prime to 5 prime to 5 prime to 3 prime because all the transcription factors they identify even the reverse transcriptase enzyme they identify in 5 prime to 3 prime direction only okay so it is already in that 5 prime to 3 prime direction the moment it enters it will start translating its proteins i mean in simple so, terms this is, so let's yeah. let's also convert that into simple terms because uh, let us believe not all here are scientists so i mean what what uh, anand is trying to say is that once the virus enters the body it's so easy for them to become one copy to two copies two copies to three copies that means if if it has extra steps then it takes a lot of time or it may be killed immediately but this virus has so easy passage to india uh, to inside the body yeah so if we see the genomic organization uh the, since as i have clearly mentioned that the genome has been published complete genome sequence has been published so it is divided into two open reading frames open reading frame in genomic point of view is nothing but from where you get all the proteins so uh, the direction is in pi prime to three prime and within that you, it is divided into two orfs orf 1a that codes for papain like protease here it is papain like protease and 3cl protease and then in another open reading frame you have a rna dependent rna polymerase since it is rna so it it needs an rna dependent rna polymerase all the viruses carry their own polymerases either they are dna viruses or rna viruses every virus carries its own uh, rna polymerase for uh, trans translation okay so uh, then you have a helicase since the genome is in a helical structure so you have a helicase there and uh, the spike protein is coded uh at this point from 21 kb 21.5 kb to 25.3 kb and there ends the rna so within uh, 1 to 30 kb the entire genomic sequence is available and then then again uh, to prove a point that this is not a bio weapon or something so if we see the receptor binding domain where it binds to the receptor so the receptor binding domain if we compare it with uh, the new sars cov2 with the bat original version which is seen in the bats and in pangolins you can see the similarity you can see the sequence similarity high sequence similarity here especially so since there is a high sequence similarity between bat pangolin and human so this again proves that this is not a bio weapon as people are conspiracy theorists are thinking and you must have got a lot of whatsapp forwards that this is a uh, bio weapon unleashed by china uh, or whatever so the research proves it is wrong and uh, and again you have a sequence similarity here again in the polybasic cleavage unit in this part you again have a sequence similarity if you compare the human sars cov bat version and pangolin version so it has come from bat it has jumped to an intermediate host pangolin and then it entered into human and mutated so uh, this is a graph uh, they have the same scientists they have done uh, uh, surface plasmon resonance so in this the most important thing is this kd value kd value is nothing but dissociation constant so lower the kd value higher is the affinity for that particular uh, uh, the receptor ace2 that is uh, uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 that is the receptor for this particular uh, virus so if you can see the receptor binding protein which is their s1 subunit so that binds to ace2 so what is the strength of that binding so that is uh, determined by this uh, technique called surface plasmon resonance so i'll not be going into any you know complicated things into that uh, technique but you need to identify but you see the kd dissociation constant where half of the only half of the receptors are full with the ligand so it is 14.7 
nanomolar whereas the original sars sars infection way back in 2003 so that was 325.8 nanomolar so you can see the difference how effective it is so it will bind to ace2 very tightly so, so it is you don't need much of concentration the yeah, lower the kd that means it has more more affinity to anything that binds so more affinity towards the ace2 ace2 is the receptor for it so, so what does corona virus does to the what it does to the body simply this corona virus immediately uh, the moment it enters the cell it binds to its receptor which is ace2 angiotensin converting enzyme 2 so the moment it binds to it then there is a envelope so the moment it enters it will release its viral dna and it hijacks the cell uh, translation machinery this is uh, the ribosome so it starts synthesizing and you have viral proteins being synthesized so this is the endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum where uh, all the viral proteins are formed when they are formed it will take some of the membrane from here that will form the envelope so the envelope is not made by the virus itself envelope is just uh, the bilayer membrane viruses don't have any bilayer membrane nor uh, do the bacteria or so it is mostly eukaryotic so the bilayer membrane is taken by the virus it forms a kind of a shell envelope so this is the nucleocapsid it forms a shell envelope and then uh, as the virions are uh, accumulated so then it spreads the inve infection and it buds out and uh, when it buds out the cell bursts so there is a limited number so after that the cell bursts uh, we call it as burst size there is a specific number after which it cannot make any more copies so it will burst so when it bursts the cell uh, will deteriorate that is cell debris and again this virus will go and infect other people and the infection cycle continues and this cell debris again will be taken up by the macrophages and uh, all those things uh, macrophages and uh, neutrophils they are scavenger uh, cells so that increases the immune response so let's see how the virus spreads now uh, the new thing that who said is that uh the scientists found that you can see it highlighted here the scientists found that severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 the sars cov 2 was detectable in aerosols previously it was uh, thought that it is not aerosolized but it is uh, detectable in aerosols for up to 3 hours so that is the reason why who even warned the medical practitioners to wear all the masks and protective equipment because they are on the front lines so up to 4 hours on the copper up to 24 hours on cardboard and up to 2 to 3 days on plastic and stainless steel so you can imagine uh, how uh, dangerous this one is so the new corona virus spread is spread through droplets and surfaces if i cough it spreads through droplets and surfaces if i touch something then it will spread the principal mode of transmission is still thought to be respiratory droplets uh, we don't know any other way of transmission so it is still thought to be respiratory droplets which may travel up to 6 feet that is the reason why people are asking you to maintain 1 meter distance 6 feet is 1 meter so you maintain 1 meter distance in social distancing so that is what governments are asking you to do so close contact with an infectious person such as shaking hands that is the reason why they are asking you to put namaste now shaking hands or touching a door knob table top or uh, other surfaces touched by an infectious person and after that when you touch your nose eyes mouth etc it can transmit the virus the virus will enter into your body okay now comes the basic difference between coronavirus common cold and the flu so uh, i think ma'am is unable to hear jagdish she yeah. is unable to hear uh, yeah, yeah i see that i think yeah so uh, uh, let me explain what is the difference between now all all the people have this uh, doubt actually what is the difference because lot of people are saying oh this is just a flu this is just a flu and that is the reason why they are neglecting this particular disease and this is causing huge pandemonium and pandemic and with deaths increasing day by day so with fever with coronavirus and flu both common with common cold you will have a runny nose but you don't have a fever fatigue you will have sometimes whereas with flu it is common muscle pains and all with influenza it is very common cough it is common usually dry cough which i have already explained the same thing is seen in influenza also whereas in cold it is very mild at least for the first two days it is very mild then it will turn into bacterial infection the common cold will not have that much amount of cough sneezing is very common because of the inflammatory response continuous sneezing is common in common cold whereas it is not seen in coronavirus nor in flu and body pains they are common sometimes and uh, it is shown that the headache and sinus and all the body pains 
they are common runny or stuffy nose it is as i said it's common in rhinoviral infection which is nothing but your common cold not in influenza or coronavirus sore throat again common in all the three diseases diarrhea it is very rare in common cold you don't have any diarrhea and uh, whereas with influenza sometimes it can show up in children headaches it is very common as i said all the people who have recovered from this virus they say that it is absolutely painful for them this headache from corona virus is absolutely painful for them and the most important thing that you need to remember is shortness of breath the moment you feel you are unable to have a deep breath you just go to a doctor the specified doctor because the other sim this symptom is not seen in either common cold or in any kind of influenza any type of influenza swine flu or bird flu or anything so the thumb rule is if you find fever and all the symptoms of a flu but with shortness of breath immediately rush to the hospital yeah on that note i would just like to add some who guidelines where they say that the seasonal flu often happens sometimes and the death rate is like from 0.05 to 0.1 percent but in, in this case of corona which is also kind of flu the death rate is around three to four percent now like this is how how drastic it is now yeah continue yeah. Uh, I also so the incubation time, uh, and incubation, time, incubation time is the time between you when you contract a virus and when your symptoms start basically it has to replicate in the meantime so that is the incubation period currently according to cdc center for disease control the incubation period is somewhere between 2 to 14 days after exposure so more than 97 percent of the people show uh, the symptoms within 11.5 days of exposure mean time of 11.5 days the average incubation time is around five days it will start within four days four to five days you will start showing the symptoms this may this estimate may change as we learn more about the virus because right now everybody is focusing on mitigating the virus rather than doing research on it and everybody are rushing for the vaccine or any drug that works for many people covid 19 symptoms start as mild symptoms just like flu so you might have heard this term from all the foreigners everybody oh it's just like flu no it gradually gets worse over a few days so what are the laboratory markers? So how do you identify, uh, how uh, the medical practitioners identify in COVID-19 patients? The most frequent thing will be decrease in the lymphocyte count, that's the, your WBC, decrease in albumin, decrease in hemoglobin levels, increase in C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein is generally released during inflammation. So increase in erythrocyte sedimentation rate. That is nothing but you have an infection. Then increase in lactate dehydrogenase and increase in D-dimer. In severe COVID-19 cases, you add the same uh, things. Apart from that, you will have increase in neutrophil count because neutrophils are the first responders. So just like police, these are the first responders. Whenever a virus or any bacterium enters, neutrophils are the first to enter. So then you have increase in ALT and AST, alanine aminotransferase and aspartate aminotransferase. That means that your liver cells, these are liver enzymes. That means that the cells in your liver they have started disintegrating and the enzymes are released into your bloodstream. So when they are detected, that means you have a problem with your liver. So that is basically LFT or liver function test. Increase in cardiac biomarkers, example, cardiac troponins, increase in procalcitonin, etc. So what are the, uh, why are the deaths happening due to COVID-19? Why are so many deaths happening? 25,000, it has crossed 25,000 now. And why is it happening at such a rapid rate? So what actually happens with these pandemics is that there is something called cytokine storm. The cytokine storm syndrome is, there are two, uh, two uh, cases for, uh, two causes for it. One is cytokine storm syndrome, other is fulminant myocarditis, which is heart problem. So let me explain cytokine storm syndrome. So when the virus enters, since it is a novel virus, your neutrophils, they'll come. And also in the alveoli, you have something called alveolar macrophages. And if anybody is, uh, fluent with immunology if they know immunology you know that my macrophages also act as antigen presenting cells apart from cd4 cd8 etc there are other cells also uh, macrophages also act as antigen presenting cells so when these macro alveolar macrophages are present and neutrophils are uh, arriving there so they release cytokines interleukin 1 beta and il6 when they start releasing the cytokines more and more number of neutrophils wbc they are recruited out and they will release more chemicals so hyperactivity of these immune cells what happens is the more uh, higher the immune response that you have the younger you are 
the more cytokine storm you have actually but uh, the uh, subsequent this uh, if the cytokine storm is taking place for more than a specified amount of time what it happens is it causes acute respiratory distress and multi organ failure it is this cytokine storm that causes the pulmonary edema or nothing but your uh, pneumonia all the covid 19 patients sick enough for hospitalization should be given serum ferritin blood test because this ferritin uh, is also a marker for uh, cytokine storm and uh, in uh, china they have blocked il6 with a monoclonal antibody which is called as tocilizumab that is nothing but monoclonal antibody so when they block that il6 so the il6 is not at all active so it cannot bind it bind to its receptors so that has shown successful outcomes and uh, when it comes to the myocarditis fulminant myocarditis it has also been reported so people are focusing on the pulmonary aspect but there is also a cardiac aspect also which should not be ignored it is primarily caused by infection with viruses and it arises very quickly and progresses rapidly and it lead to severe heart failure the contractile function of the heart may be affected so circulatory failure representing rapid onset of hypotension cardiogenic shock with mortality rates as high as 50 to 70% of the cases if you are hospitalized and you are in icu if this comes then 50 to 70% of the cases there is death so physicians they should uh, take attention not just about respiratory dysfunction but also about the symptoms of cardiac injury you cannot ignore one and you only focus on the other so uh, this is a small uh, diagram or uh, a table to show the mortality rate you can see between 0 to 9 years old there are no fatalities that doesn't mean they don't get affected we can we are seeing cases where even a, a month old baby is getting affected but there are no fatalities as yet reported as yet so most of the fatalities are about 80 years old but governments are saying uh, see the fatality rate has increased from the 60 year old mark so if you are 60 and above 60 then the chances of your uh, you getting the infection and if you have comorbidities like diabetes hypertension and uh, cancer and all the other immune dysfunction etc then there is uh, death and apart from that even younger people can have death if you have habits like smoking where your lungs get affected and drinking where your immune system gets affected so how to protect oneself this you know you have been seeing a lot of videos how to wash hands and all so the best way to prevent is washing hands often as you have seen so many videos the correct way of washing hands this is the first one second one and all so those videos are available so use soap and water and if soap is not available at least 20 seconds so people say okay uh, sing happy birthday for two times and that will be covered within 20 seconds or so or any other song that you want or you can just count the seconds and if you don't have soap and water you can use a hand sanitizer for at least with at least 60 percent alcohol but if you ask any microbiologist i am a microbiologist uh, by background so if you ask any microbiologist 60 percent alcohol will not cut it it has to be 70 percent alcohol 70 percent alcohol is the gold standard for your uh, disinfection so that comes in any microbiology textbook you open it and you will see 70 percent ethanol it can be ethanol or it can be propanol there are various combinations but it has to be 70 percent of alcohol other helper sources in typical indian kitchen like you can take aloe vera puree and then mix it with water if you don't have any access to hand sanitizer you can make it at your home aloe vera is a instant uh, antibacterial antiviral so you can mix it in water all you need is a spray bottle or otherwise mix some turmeric turmeric has perfect antiviral and antibacterial antiseptic properties mix some turmeric in water and then spray it that is or you can have some turmeric and then wash your hands that is the easier way that is the indian way the other ways to protect is stay at least six feet away that is a meter maintain a meter distance even if somebody coughs at you then you can uh, have it avoid touching your face but it is easier said than done because you have a muscle memory something called muscle memory not just here you have memory even in your muscles so you can see i am moving my hands here involuntarily even if i am having any child move my hands involuntarily the moment you do it then you will contract the disease so don't share your personal items like glasses or drinking glasses utensils toothbrushes lip balm etc wipe your surfaces like door knobs keyboards stair rails in your home with household cleaners it can be benzalkonium chloride based or it can be detol like parachloroprisol or diluted bleach solution hypochlorite sodium hypochlorite anything 
wash your hands or use hand sanitizer after touching surfaces like elevator when you are pressing the elevator buttons or atm buttons gas pump handles when you are dispensing your yourself and grocery carts when you are pushing the grocery carts and all and best thing is stay home call your doctor if you are having respiratory issues and think that your system your symptoms are consistent with covid 19 symptoms then immediately join a hospital so why do we need need to use soap and a sanitizer because there is an envelope the virus as i said there is an envelope here these are spike proteins every envelope a lipid bilayer has you have a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail so if you uh, take out any biochemistry book you can uh, find the structure of a lipid so the base will be a glycerol and then you can have a phospholipid or anything that will be the hydrophobic end and you have uh, sorry hydrophilic end and you have a hydrophobic end so uh, the only thing that can make is the why 70% alcohol that is another question why only 70% alcohol why not 100% ethanol or why not less because you need water for the hydrophobic uh, alcohol to bind to the hydrophobic hydrophilic end and after that along with the water it will enter into the hydrophobic and alcohol then enters into the hydrophobic end so you need the perfect balance between the alcohol the organic compound and the inorganic water so you need that perfect balance so 70% ethanol and all the sanitizers sterilium any company you will have 70% ethanol so it will form soap will form micelle actually you will form a micelle and then uh, that is how the viral particles all the viral proteins which are there the spike proteins everything will be removed when you wash for 20 seconds so uh, i mean i think anand let's can you stress that on soap water so just soap water is enough to kill the virus right yes 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 you can use soap but uh, at all places if you are going out you cannot carry soap or something because it needs water so that is the reason why people are always asking you to carry a portable hand sanitizer so if you don't uh, right now sanitizers are not available uh, they are having a problem and even doctors are finding it difficult to have hand sanitizers so they are getting on priority basis so if you are unable to find any hand sanitizers if you can find turmeric mix turmeric in water have a spray bottle and then you can use it or aloe vera gel you can if you have aloe vera plant at your house take a bark of it then uh, remove the jelly part and then mix it with water it will be easily mixed with water and then you can use it as a disinfectant so that's a easy way when you are at home then use as many times as possible soap as many times as possible but maintain that 20 second rule it takes 20 seconds for the entire hand to be clean so that hygiene should be maintained you cannot just wash like this and then leave it the 20 seconds have to be compulsory so uh, let me go to the current treatments what are the current treatments that are available and what you are hearing in the news so nih national institute of health has started a investigational vaccine that you have you must have heard in whatsapp trials and whatsapp uh, messages and all it has started an investigational vaccine this is uh, basically what they are giving is a dummy vaccine and then they'll go for the live vaccine they are just testing with a small set right now and anyhow it will take 1.8 years it's not that it will come in say 6 months or 3 months or so it will take 1.5 years for the one, yeah 1 and 1/2 or 1.8 years to get the entire uh, vaccine safety into the market so the corona viruses uh, they they are spherical and they have spikes so they give the crown like appearance that uh, we have discussed earlier so uh, once the genetic uh, just information a became yeah just a second so let me explain what is a vaccine first so vaccine is something that it is given before the disease comes to the body so i mean it's it's organism itself you you attenuate or you inactivate the the poison of the the virus and you inject something which is not poisonous to the body but body will think that the organism is already in the body so that it start producing antibodies to that so that means the body prepares before itself that the real organism enters so that's why we give vaccines before the disease comes so this is the main difference between vaccines and the drugs so once the genetic information became available even brazilian scientists have uh, placed that sequence in uh, i think pubmed or so they have kept it uh, the, the sequence available so the scientists quickly selected a sequence to express the stabilized spike protein as i have already mentioned to you the spike protein so they have identified the sequence so what sequence is coding for that spike protein so i have identified that and uh, onto the existing mrna platform and then uh, they are uh, 
targeting that particular uh, spike protein so the investigational vaccine directs the body cells to express the virus protein so before the virus comes you are making the body to express the viral spike protein so that the immune system will come and it will create a memory cell memory b cells and t cells initially you will get an immune response you will get a slight fever and so with any vaccine so after that you will have a memory cell memory b cell and memory t cell it will create a memory the moment the virus enters immediately the memory cells will get activated and they'll start produce antibodies and they'll attenuate the virus so that is basic concept of vaccine so the mrna1273 is the code name that is given so it has shown promise in animal models and uh, this is the first trial to examine it in humans other companies are also trying serum institute of india is trying and uh, i've also recently seen that university of hyderabad a scientist from university of hyderabad she is also targeting it and also a german company called curevac it is also working on a vaccine on a priority basis so when it comes to treatments we have spoken about vaccines what is the what are the treatments so remdesivir developed by gilead sciences inc is an investigational broad spectrum antiviral treatment it has broad antiviral activity that inhibits viral replication through premature termination of rna transcription that means broad spectrum antiviral treatment means that it's not just for coronavirus it can be used for other viruses also so because it terminates the reverse transcript rna transcription so the rna it it, uh, it cannot make more copies of rna it just stops it so you cannot get more uh, copies of the virus so it has in vitro activity against sars cov2 and in vitro in, in vivo activity against related beta coronaviruses in the coronaviridae family so virologists have been studying the viruses in bats and they have identified so many coronaviruses viruses from the coronaviridae family so they are called beta coronaviruses and the classification is very complex so i don't want to go into that classification part but then yeah other coronaviruses also so that is the reason why it is called broad spectrum antiviral treatment so what nia id that is national institute of allergy and immune uh, Im, uh, Im, uh, national institute of allergy and uh, immune uh, department i suppose in usa so we urgently need a safe and uh, effective treatment for covid-19 although remdesivir has been administered to some patients we don't have a solid data to indicate that it can improve clinical outcomes that is was uh, what the director of nia ad has said so there are other treatments uh, you must have heard it on uh, the internet and on news hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin combination so chloroquine hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin combination. chloroquine has been used uh, for malaria treatment and chemo prophylaxis and hydroxychloroquine is used for treatment of rheumatoid arthritis system systemic lupus erythematosus basically these are autoimmune disorders so it will reduce the inflammation so hydroxychloroquine reduces the inflammation so it might help in reducing that uh, uh, chemokine response and uh, uh, the load of the immune cells coming into that cytokine response so uh, both drugs have in vitro activity against sars cov and sars cov2 uh, and other coronaviruses with hydroxychloroquine you can see in the graph the hydroxychloroquine has a certain activity but if you mix it with azithromycin why you are using azithromycin it's a antibiotic you might ask a question why are you using an antibiotic when you have when you are treating with a viral infection because you have normal flora just like on the normal flora of the gut you have normal flora everywhere on the skin uh, normal flora in the mouth and also in the throat so when uh, when the virus infects the virus infects and inflames your uh, cells here mucous membrane so what happens is it creates this uh, staphylococcus aureus and streptococcus pyogenes all this which causes strep throat etc so they'll start acting upon it since your immune system is compromised and the virus is replicating so these opportunistic bacteria they start growing and they'll create and also there is another bacteria called haemophilus influenzae it is a bacteria but it also causes pneumonia it does not cause influenza influenza is caused by virus but the name is haemophilus influenzae so that again causes pneumonia so to differentiate and to kill that bacteria also these are opportunistic bacteria and normally present here so to kill that you are giving a combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin so the ongoing study is coordinated by mediterranean infection university hospital institute marseille france and uh, this has been accepted even in america they are using this particular combination uh, rapidly in america because the number of deaths are increasing whereas in india 
it's a different case altogether in india and china it's a different case indian council of medical research and chinese physicians have validated a drug cocktail consisting of two antiretroviral drugs namely lopinavir and ritonavir okay two antiretroviral drugs which are against hiv and an anti influenza drug you must have heard it oseltamivir also called as tamiflu uh, you must have heard it during the 2009 swine flu epidemic oseltamivir or tamiflu and then anti malaria drug chloroquine that we have discussed so all the four drugs combined as a cocktail that is being given with different dosages that doctors are taking care of so around 13 patients or 13 to 20 patients have been treated with this particular uh, drug combination which includes an italian couple with very high viral load even uh, those people were treated since all corona viruses are enveloped viruses so a lot of doctors are asking can we use uh, amantidine and rimantidine because if you have studied about influenza viruses if you have studied virology influenza viruses can be treated by two class of drugs one is amantidine and rimantidine which inhibits the envelope formation and you have uh, uh, zanamivir and oseltamivir they will inhibit the neuraminidase spike formation so the n spike and the, that is why h1n1 that is hemagglutinin and neuraminidase spike so they are likely candidates for treatment some physicians in india are considering those alternatives upon consultation with the microbiologists and uh, i have to give a note here dr balram bhargava the director general of icmr head of icmr has explained in a recent press conference plus interaction that the tests there are two basic tests one is either antibody based or real time pcr based it may turn up as negative during first four days of the infection cycle and also on the 14th day of the infection cycle so you will be positive only after the fourth day anyway between fifth day and 13th day so they are testing three times so initially while they are screening and after that in the middle and after that and the 14th day and i will repeat it twice so that to confirm that you don't have any uh, corona virus in your system and then they will be uh, discharging you from the hospital so he further added that around 80% of the population they will not have any problem the immune system will take care of the problem will come with the rest of the 20% of which 5% the most people who have uh, the older gener older people with comorbidities like diabetes and all and heart attack and uh, atherosclerosis these people they have to be admitted to icu and uh, these are the people who will, uh, who will have the highest amount of mortality rate so another danger surprising danger is that in japan a couple of pet dogs have been tested positive for covid-19 this is a scary thing because uh, this is not a natural virus for dogs okay so it has the covid-19 as it is as it is in the humans which strain uh, they have not yet identified is it the virulent strain or the less virulent strain they have not identified but they have identified the covid-19 and it raises serious fears about the cross infection from pets okay you have uh corona virus and you have uh, got treated and all but your pet has it again so when you are near to your pet again you will get it again and also india and uh, some other impoverished some other impoverished countries they have stray dogs so if it enters into the stray population stray dog population so again there is a risk and it might mutate and it might uh, come back in another form so uh, this is from the harrison's elements of medicine so those who are Uh, those who are joined who are doctors so they know this particular book so we don't read in such an abstract way we scientists we read it in a much more detailed way each virus separately the drugs and all separately but how chloroquine works is that it is a weak base that diffuses into lysosomes and basically this virus requires a certain ph okay it requires acidic ph this chloroquine goes and increases the ph generally the lysosomes all the enzymes they require that acidic ph when you increase the ph the enzymes are inactive and uh, even the viruses they cannot come inside because they need that particular ion uh, ion for that ion transport we should have a particular uh, charge of a membrane every membrane has a charge outside you have ions inside you have ions the balance that balance is uh, broken by the chloroquine also the same thing happens with amantidine so this was circul uh, circulated rapidly in uh, whatsapp and then a doctor started asking question why not use amantidine because it has the same property as chloroquine and all the envelope other envelope viruses I have put a paper here even chikungunya virus uh, this is a very recent paper from iit uh, iit delhi actually so they have found that amantidine works on an ion channel protein from chikungunya virus so influenza has a ion channel protein called m2 and uh, that will bind to that to the cell membrane and all 
apart from the N and uh, H. So you have uh, other enveloped protein, uh, enveloped viruses. So they have all these ion channel proteins. So if you know cell biology, there are three ion channels. First is uniporter, symporter, and antiporter. So when one ion goes, another ion comes. That is symport. That is antiport. So uniport is just one ion comes in. Symport is along with the ion, say glucose molecule or other molecules come in. That is how basically the products enter into the cell or hormones or anything they enter into the cell in this manner so that ion channel uh, has to be broken down and that can be done by amantidin so amantidin has that property amantidin and remantidin also so they have not checked remantidin but amantidin has a huge uh, chance as a medicine and as the cases surge probably in india they'll start using amantidin also uh, when icmr validates it they'll start using it so there are other integrated there are other integrated therapies also like uh, the missing links first is sleep strengthens your defense uh, mechanism so can we use melatonin so melatonin has recently been shown to reduce the inflammatory markers il1 beta and attenuates the inflammasome regardless of age so the dosage is so that is the same slide it is enhanced so melatonin so doctors are uh, thinking about melatonin and vitamin C and now people are also talking about vitamin D treatment also. So these are alternate treatments. So these are uh, used in doctors in America also. Right now they are not using it. It has to be validated and they are trying to get the permission from the government so that this can be used because the natural chemicals are being used here. So what is prophylaxis? How can we prevent ourselves? We Indians, how can we pre prevent ourselves? You have Ayurveda. So in Ayurveda, you can use septilin the, from Himalaya Drug Company. So this is how it looks. I have put a picture. You can also eat Chavan Prash. It is rich in vitamin C and 50 other ingredients. It boosts your immunity. And also, you have medical wines like Draksharista. Many people who are Indians, they might know. Draksharista, it has card, uh, cinnamon, that is dalchinche, dalchini or what they call it. So you have that. It's a natural antiviral. You have Aswagandha Rishta again then. And then the most important Bhalla Ataka Sava. So this is how a 5 liter bottle of Bhalla Ataka Sava looks. These are all prevention medicines so that your body gets, uh, you know, your, your immune system gets activated before the virus enters because ultimately everybody has to get the virus. Other immune boosting foods available in traditional Indian kitchen like cardamom or uh, haldi or tulsi or anything. Anything can be used. All of them are immune boosters. Anything can be used. Steam inhalation with essential oils like, uh, say, lemongrass, citronella, lavender, etc., to clean the airways, just like when you have a cold or something, even under normal conditions, you can use it so that uh, you can clean the airways and also it suits the mind because right now there is lockdown happening and a lot of people are suffering from anxiety and depression and panic attacks because seeing the number of cases and the number of deaths and all. So, this might help in reducing their. Now, Shenmuk, it's your call now. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Anand, for your information. Yeah, I'm Dr. Shanmuka, uh, doing here postdoc in University of Heidelberg, Germany. Uh, yeah, so I'll go through the reason for the number uh, for the rise in number of cases in all other countries. Uh, so the first and prime most reason is cheating the authorities by not disclosing the travel history. This is the foremost important thing that every person need to be you know aware of the current situation. And also, we have come across like people are using the antipyretic drugs such as paracetamol, usually to cheat the infrared temperature scanners at air post. Because we all know that these antipyretic drugs they decrease the fever. So the I mean, most of the people in the airports are screened using these uh, thermal scanners, where only they screen for the temp change in body temperature. So this is also one of the reason why you know uh, people are not able to detect the corona in the initial cases, and also lack of civic sense and seriousness about the pandemic. Uh, and also the touring and partying during this time, these times of lockdown is not also not good for them and disobeying the rules, skipping the quarantine routine, which is recommended by government and other people, you know, the 14 days quarantine is a must for everyone who come from, you know, uh, from other countries or like, you know, from highly infected uh, countries or something like that. Also just uh, uh, avoiding huge gatherings despite agreeing to, uh, you know, home quarantine and not hearing to authorities during this time of lockdown and the false sense of pride in thinking that this this is just a flu we have seen a couple of cases here so probably i will share my screen here mm -hmm. uh, no i think i have to yeah. let me go through 
Jared Shen. Yeah, yeah. I'm just sliding the what do you say? Yeah. Yes, sir. Is it yeah, right? Is it no, visible? We, no, we can't see it. Yes. No. Okay. Chrome tab. I came out of my screen actually. Yeah, now we can yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So now, uh, so we are looking for the rapidly affected or infect, affected countries here, uh, where they say, and these are like we all know how the bacterial curve looks. So the initially there are one or two bacteria here. Uh, this is a graphical representation, and as the number increases, it grows exponentially. Like you know, this phase is called log phase. And at one point, when the medium is completely used up, the bacteria stops dividing, and usually they die. This is this virus also similarly, like because it ha hijacks the host cells now. So at this point, you can call this a log phase, where the virus initially prepares to you know double in exponential manner. At one point, it starts double, and this is where you see the log phase. So currently, all the you know the situation right now all across the world is in the log phase, where the bacteria is doubling. So yeah, the important part is the fatal rate or the death rate, which is also happening slowly increasing along with the growth of the virus as well. And these are a few more stats from the other countries like Iran, Germany, and India, where all, all of them are in the exponential or in the log phase of their growth. Yeah, these are the statistics from India, where uh, as of, uh, uh, so as of 27th March, we have 722 confirmed cases. And total disease are 16 cases, and uh, these are recovered cases. So it is still growing them, and we need to be aware of and careful about this. So yeah, so this is this is the uh, information from one of the website from the US uh, where they show by country by country how this looks. So you can see that this this is the place where they doubles every day. I mean the virus rate. And these are the countries where the the cases are reported every two days, and this is where they are like for three days, and this is for every week. You can see the other countries like Taiwan or Singapore or Japan, they uh, they were able to flatten the curve, whereas the other cases of most of the countries they're still growing exponentially. They are not in this flattened curve, but they're still dividing. So what to do or how you can flatten the curve? So yeah, two main features, without protective measures and with protective measures. Without protective measures, you can see the bell-shaped curve where the big virus still grows and you know infect people and it causes death. Whereas with the proper healthcare system and with the proper guidance from the government and proper healthcare methods, you can all, always control them with protective measures. This is what I mean by flattening the curve means. So what to learn? If how, I can, how if, I can uh, if I can come in, Shanmuk, uh, previous slide. Basically, guys, what is happening here in the healthcare system? What is happening with Italy? Th this slide, the flattening in the curve one. So what is happening in Italy and uh, all those things is, see, you have healthcare system capacity. The number of ICU beds that are available are only limited. Okay. So what is happening is when the number of cases are so many that the number of ICU beds are not available, it overwhelms the healthcare system. So you have seen how Italy is dealing with it. So the number of cases are increasing and increasing and increasing and it just collapsed. So that is what happens here. So that is where every government is asking, we have, we need to flatten the curve, we need to flatten the curve. So that is the meaning of that. The healthcare system only has a certain capacity. Continuation mode. Yeah. So what to learn, what does it mean to flatten the curve? So these are the few paper cuttings from different websites like Al Jazeera, Time, BBC and other things where they have praised few countries like Taiwan, Hong Kong and Singapore for their model of governance, how they're able to contain the virus until now. So I will go through uh, the examples of these countries to explain few things, how they were really able to contain this virus until now. Yeah, so this, these are the case studies. First, we'll go with the Taiwan which has only uh, which has like 23 million population living in mainland china and it is just 130 kilometer from china so by all means it means that the uh, taiwan would be the worst hit country until now but only but instead we see only few hundred cases in taiwan this didn't happen by chance so what did taiwan learn from the outbreak of sars that happened in from 2003 so soon after the sars outbreak the taiwan government established national health command center 
and this command is like a rapid task force you, you can call like which you know during the ki kind of crisis or pandemic this is the command center which gets activated and this directly comes under ministry of health and the minister of health is the director for this command center and within five weeks uh, after corona outbreak that is uh, like you know on 20th january because we know that the china announced on 31st of december that the unknown flu has emerged and it's a corona and after like within within this time by january 20 the uh, China, taiwan government activated the command epidemic uh, central epidemic command center a branch within this nhcc and they implemented 124 action plan for this to contain the virus so this the big list of 124 action things that they have done and these uh, on a brief note they included the travel alerts and bans and apart from that they also allocated special budget to contain the coronavirus and they have stopped uh, you know uh, uh, to to uh, ship the mask and sanitizers out of the country so they were able to produce 4 million masks every day during this time to and sanitizers and ev what not everything and the good part is like they were made to public before the outbreak uh, before you know, uh, the cases were increased i mean because people were given live feeds about where the masks are available in every government places or in public places the hand sanitizers were made available and everything and also is the uh, what the taiwan government did is the did not allow the uh, false fake news to spread around so direct uh, pre uh, presidential briefings were done from the government itself and they were very good in tagging the fake information that is available in the internet so in a single day uh, they they also integrated health insurance database with immigration and with the customs database this is a big what you say that uh, large data ai integration means like the government had every detail of the person where he came you know from highly infected uh, countries to the low infected countries and they were able to alert every citizen like uh, how they need to be quarantined during this time and there were also sms alerts given to person and person and every travel history were checked where every contact person was traced where everyone was quarantined during this time on on february 18 the government also granted all hospitals or the clinics and pharmacies to this patient travel histories as well this is called they called it big data uh, integration or something or ai based integration so the taiwan digital minister and the english minister without the po portfolio to hold office utilized this artificial intelligence to harness the data and created real time digital updates to alert citizens of these risk areas to avoid and a live map of local supplies of face masks was given to everyone so by late January, they had a, the Taiwan had a stockpile of 44 million masks and 1.9 million N95 masks. This is how they were good at controlling the virus. And, and these measures were strict, but also combined with high degree of transparency from the government. And daily press briefings were given, as I said before, and regular public service broadcasts were issued from the president's office. And simple messaging about hand washing, face masks, and dangers of hoarding were effective. Perhaps these actions were not uh, similar to American and European audience, but also raises doubt if these measures were done before itself, they could have saved hundreds of lives. Yeah, uh, I will not go to the last point because it's a bit controversial <laughs> and probably I'll skip to the other one. Yeah, and the other countries like Singapore, how they were able to contain this virus. Taiwan was the third country to report the uh, coronavirus case, and by mid-February, they, they had some around 80 cases, uh, highest outside the Chinese mainland. So what they did, the, China, the Singapore government, which has some high, very good healthcare system, so they first screening all the flu and pneumonia cases in the country. So it was operated 24-7, and every, every person was uh, screened for these uh, influenza and pneumonia cases, and they were sorted out or segregated accordingly. So the new they thought that the new cases that are arising from the you know uh, are due to the corona and they were also they have also used the um, um, the government's uh, protocols and you know travel bans and and they had also the information of about every every person traveling from around the world into the Singapore and they have tracked and traced everyone and they were quarantined accordingly. So I mean amid the coronavirus outbreak the quarantine and isolation protocols they work for them effectively in the permanent rest and there were laws also made like who break these quarantine laws are punished 
So a permanent resident who breached these quarantine rules lost his status also in Singapore, while a couple was charged in court with the providing false information about the travel history. This is how like Singapore were able to contain. And they had also this action plan from their website where they, so they have, so how this works, like they're tracing the positive virus case and collecting the tra information, interviewing them, like who came along with the contact with this person and verifying the information. And they also involved police to go to the persons and tracking them. And the close qu contacts were identified and quarantined and they were monitored until, you know, they're free from Corona or something. Yeah, so these are the very good models, I would say, where, uh, where the people, you know, good example models. And I would say, uh, the other countries were not as good effective as these countries in controlling the corona outbreak yeah so i will go with the myth busters uh, for a brief uh, i would just only go the, the myth busters that are available in the who website until now so many people have asked like uh, do the hot and humid climates will prevent the virus <coughs> progression uh, so the who says that until now they have no information that you know a hot climate can control the virus but it's it's the it's uh, like there is every chance that still can the virus can still be transmitted in this hot and humid climates also the cold cannot contain the virus so it's uh, so this myth is also now broken where because they say that the <clears throat> cold weather and snow cannot kill the virus either and uh, there was also that uh, ultraviolet disinfection can work. Uh, it is not good for the skin because it causes uh, UV dimers in the skin and uh, you have skin inflammation and irritations. So it is not good for the people. So also a few people have asked like uh, taking a hot bath uh, does prevent this coronavirus disease. Uh, the, the answer is no, this does not prevent from the spread of the disease. Uh, and also there is a notion that uh, whether the mosquitoes can transmit this disease no there, so there is no information available that the mosquitoes can uh, transfer this coronavirus yeah so they were also asking whether the hand dryers were effective in killing the new virus no the hand drivers are also not effective in killing the virus it's only alcohol based sanitizers and the soaps are effective in killing the virus so yeah how how effective of thermal scanners in detecting people infected with so thermal scanners are as i said before the thermal scanners only scan for the body change in body temperatures uh, so you need to be aware that uh, because we also as i said before fever and shortness of breath and cold so these are the three symptoms where you can be sure about this you have this about corona virus or not can spraying alcohol or chlorine all your body kills the virus? No, actually, so these uh, alcohol and the chlorine based stuff are good uh, sanit so sanitizers. So chlorine based uh, <clears throat> things are good to have around the house so that they won't uh, allow you spread of the disease. And the alcohol, as said before, by Anand, 70% alcohol within the is, is good to kill the virus on the hands, but not inside body. So the do vaccines, uh, protect uh, against from pneumonia or the agar or against the new coronavirus. Now, vaccines against pneumonia such as pneumococcal vaccine or Haemophilus influenzae, for instance, a, uh, vaccine do not provide protection against the new virus. So the new virus is so new and that and different that it, it needs own vaccine to treat. So can regularly rinsing your nose with saline can help you infection with the new coronavirus? No, there is no evidence that this can uh, reduce the coronavirus infection. Also, we have come across a few news that whether the garlic is uh, helpful in preventing the coronavirus. No, the garlic has some antimicrobial activities because this corona is a virus. So this uh, no information available as of now that this can also help to contain the coronavirus spread. Or so also as is like only the elder people get this uh, coronavirus no as uh, we have the statistics starting from the new students new young people to the older ones we would say the older ones are due to comorbidities have the high risk of infection but this cannot exclude that young people are you know spared or something like that. so everyone has this chance of getting the coronavirus so be careful about this 
so are antibiotics effective in preventing the coronavirus no so most of the antibiotics are uh, like you know they have for the bacteria but this is a virus so no antibiotic would work against this virus so are there any specific medicines we already have discussed about this today there is no specific medicine but we have all these like you know suggestions to make what could be effective and you know few cl clinical trials to show that these are in their currently stage current stage of clinical trials so until now uh, we don't have any effective medicines yeah but doctors are prescribing according to the information that they have and we cannot comment on that which is good or which is bad yeah so uh, so when to wear a mask for healthy people wear a mask only if you are taking care of person with suspected coronavirus infection wear a mask if you are coughing or sneezing and masks are effective only when used in combination with frequent hand cleaning and alcohol based hand sanitizers so soap and water so if you wear a mask then also you should remember that how to dispose of it properly i think uh, yeah so this is what we have to offer for you guys uh, for this uh, scientific discussion about the coronavirus and for this we would like to acknowledge our dear friend and our uh, fourth uh, biogans member we usually call it four groups of biogans ishwar reddy for his contribution to his slides also uh, sadly he is not here with us because he is right now completing his phd in the final stages so he's kind of busy with his own work yeah we would like to thank him also we would like to acknowledge dr pravin kumar saxena dr natraj dravid and dravid dr bhumi vishwas reddy garu and the entire group of doctors in the integrated medicine group and dr anand krishna vemori also i would like to thank dr ushi mohandas for her unflinching support we would also like to thank dr chandrashekar for his profound knowledge and insights on the entire fmt group we would like to thank the doctors medical paramedical staff for all of the in all the countries for the unending sacrifice in battling this pandemic also we would like to thank the people of india for supporting the total lockdown of the country despite the hardships and paramilitary forces and the police for maintaining the law and order during this tough situation yeah stay safe and healthy do not panic exude positivity when there is a will there is a highway yeah thank you very much uh jagdish yeah hello hello yeah good yeah. i'm uh, i'm dr falguni here mm -hmm. uh, from mumbai so thank you it was a very informative lecture and uh, a lot of doubts have been cleared for us and um, thank you everybody on integrative medicine yeah thank you so much <laughs> glad you liked our video <laughs> thank you ma'am yeah, thank you so let's uh, look into the chat chat window and see what kind of questions we can answer uh, yeah uh, so feel free to post your questions in the chat box we will do it for maybe 15 20 minutes from now and we'll just close it up because we don't want to trouble it's a dinner time in india <laughs> i mean obviously so yeah mm -hmm. so arun kalur purushottam are we working on inhibitors and why big pharma companies are coming up with solutions so i think i can address this because being a pharma uh, representative uh, pharma many pharma companies are working on it and they are i think many many clinical trials are being run so it's just a matter of time there will be a lot of drugs from the pharma companies so when you talk about big pharma companies on inhibitors or any drugs or vaccines it's a big game normally it's a, it's a game of 12 to 15 years and the, uh, like 2 billions are spent in clinical trials but since this corona is kind of so uh, emerging so fast people are making it so fast and then and we expect at least one one and a half year things should be already in the market okay why yeah. only mocktails of antiviral and cq anant you want to give an answer? i think we have addressed already this question i guess right yeah yeah mocktails um, so hydroxychloroquine actually yeah mm -hmm. okay i was those I have explained it in detail. Anyway. Yeah. It seems two decades, and still we are working on vaccines for coronavirus. This was a big, big, big business for pharma giants to work on since last corona infection. There is one big candidate molecule against AAK1 inhibitor. So that's good to know. Is there something, guys, you want to address? 
but that is different from this particular uh, strain of uh, SARS actually. That is different from this. So it's a no even one. in the middle had, in the middle we had MERS Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. So yeah, it's up to the pharma giants whether they want to create it or not. We can't comment on what their business practices are. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, and uh, yeah, and again from Arun, this makes sense. Make a sense of dangerous when WHO already had a episode of SARS and still look long, still took long to announce pandemic and literally this is a political issue. So, yeah, I mean let's let's not discuss the uh, political and conflicting information here. Um, yeah, it is. But uh, right now, uh, yesterday a G20 meeting uh, had happened. Virtual G20 meeting organized uh, by the G20 company. I mean countries. Uh, and uh, Prime Minister Modi has clearly stated that we need a reform in WHO because it was founded on principles of the last century and it needs, uh, you know, something radical and you need from the grounds up approach for that because we, uh, they have failed in declaring it in a pandemic and uh, they did not have the resources. That is what Prime Minister had to say. So and everybody agreed to that. So they might be doing that in near future where uh, the next pandemic if that it's again this has to uh, yeah. you have to sustain this, the next wave this is just a beginning every pandemic comes in waves the second wave is uh, more dangerous actually looking yeah, at the so past I mean, if the who was, was uh, you know uh, was good enough in declaring a pandemic at the very least, uh, very early stage this would have made other government to made laws you know to so that have special budget to contain this virus and you know spreading of the virus uh, ha having a person to person tracking of the travel information history and you know something like that would have alerted more governments so uh, yeah this is where i think uh, not just not just that even after declaring of pandemic people are not taking it seriously in countries like australia and britain and all they are uh, looking for money and they are not shutting down anything so that is again an issue people not following and people just chilling on beaches and all that creates again a sense so australia has yet to report the high number of cases and it will rise slowly unfortunately there will be cases from australia very soon mm. so how rap how rapidly do this virus multiply by priyanka yeah, it has a very high multiplication rate, as yeah. I have already explained in the slide. The dissociation constant, you can see it has it binds very quickly. It has very, very high affinity. And the moment it enters, the moment it enters, it creates cytokine storm, and after that, you can see multi-organ failure by the tenth day. That is what doctors had to say. You can see it practically. You can see it by yourself. It seems. So that yeah. is a very horrible situation with this particular virus. I mean, yeah, I think this has something to do with the incubation time that we have already mentioned in our slides. Yeah, so, this, yeah. yeah. It's also something that uh, I mean, if if you are a student who will be comparing with the bacterial replication, this is a bit different with the virus, because mm -hmm. bacteria replicates one to two, uh, but virus doesn't replicate like that. They utilize uh, the body uh, machinery of the cells, and they replicates into multiple copies. So as long as yeah. your body is healthy and active, it can multiply like hell. Exactly. Yeah. So any information on asymptomatic nature in affected persons? Uh, I can I can address this. So for uh, two days back, one of my colleague has reported that he is positive for Corona, and uh, he said that he was he had symptoms for a couple of while. Then it he didn't. Then afterwards he had so. Uh, the the message what I understood is that he had like on and off symptoms, and uh, at at one point it became worse. He lost sense of taste and smell as well. So uh, it really depends. I mean, the answer if you have good immunity, it can fight back. If you don't have good immunity, or sometimes even if you have good immunity, the virus will hijack everything, and slowly you'll start seeing symptoms. And uh, and symptoms are also varying uh, varies bit. Uh, depending on the virus because the virus are getting mutated so fast and the, the aggressive strains have more symptoms and the less aggressive ones doesn't have that much symptoms. I think another person is the Ragadipi usage of mask. Can we use the same mask multiple times? No. I mm -hmm. mean the normal surgical mask can't be used for multiple times. Mm -hmm. But what type of mask should be used? Mm -hmm. Like N95 mask and uh, there is a special yeah, grade I'm called that is absolutely impossible right now going by the situation and N95 masks are to be used by the medical professionals right now. So N95 can be used multiple times because you have a filter and uh, you have yeah, exactly. a valve. Whereas and there has to be masks, filtering 
filtering grade like FFP3 standard, yeah. which stands for filtering phase FFP2 piece three. FFP, FFP3 yeah. standard. So that right. again, N95 and N99. So right mm -hmm. now they are not available. So right. there is no way of using it. Don't reuse any mask of surgical uh, variety. Mask, that is used yeah. to cure infection uh, out from others, not to stop others' exactly. infection from you. So don't use that. Okay. Falguni. Okay. May I answer this question like yeah. for the face mask? Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, my name is Ashali. And actually recently from my university, I'm like in Czech Republic for the mask related thing because there is like a huge like like of like ma mask. So they are like giving us the cloth mask and they are also giving us like the instruction how to reuse it. They say do not wear a particular mask more than four hours continuously. And after mm -hmm. using it, just like wash it like in hot water with soap water and dry it and then only reuse it. It's for cloth mask, not for the uh, yeah, hospital. Cloth and... mask. Vaish Vaishali, uh, thank you so much for that. Can you... For example, uh, are, you, are you able to see this? This is the cloth mask. This can be used mm -hmm. and reused multiple times. I have used it for my PhD. But uh, the other thing uh, with the respirator marks, you, you cannot use it for longer yeah. period of time. It will create a strain near your nose. Apart from that, the vapor, water, the carbon dioxide and water vapor that comes out, that will clog the filter. So you are yeah. not supposed yeah. to wear that mask for longer period of time. I mean, yeah. uh, th thanks, Vaishali. It also makes sense that so you can use cloth mask. So that means you can make yeah. it wrong, right? Because it's the only thing for normal people now. Governments are distributing like in Europe, mainly in Czech Republic, the cloth masks, not for the healthcare since like healthcare professionals, yeah. but for the general public only. Like now, the uh, cloth masks are available. Super. That means people can also make their own cloth masks. This is yeah. Super. They are making it like there are a lot many people who are just doing it for charity now. They are just yeah. like. I heard from India also like few few people who stitch, you know, the clothes also making the face mask and like, you know, something like the stitching by themselves yeah. and when, selling uh, in the market. When people from jails and all, uh, those people are uh, doing that service also. Mm -hmm. So cloth mask is better compared to the surgical plastic type of surgical mask. Yeah. It, is, exactly. it is. Surgical yeah. mask is cheap, but cloth mask is slightly on the costlier side, but you can re wash it and use it. So that is yeah. better. Yeah. Uh, than uh, once you can use and throw kind of uh, surgical mask. Yeah. yeah. So uh, going to another question, uh, Falguni, uh, who who should be given vitamin C besides elderly people with comorbidities? If that can be answered by uh, Dr. Saxena. So uh, you need to contact Dr. Saxena for it and the Inter integrative medicine group. So if you are in the group, then uh, I think it is his. Thing. We are not medical doctors, so what dose of vitamin C should be given and to whom? That uh, those people are experts and they'll be doing that. Yeah. So what dose it? Yeah. And uh, hi, I have one more question. Like I can ask it, right? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. sure. So the sure. thing is, like, if you know about, like, I I'm like following like some news. So in like Germany, like the market, she said that you know the. 70% of the population will get infected by the virus, you know, yes. and that thing we saw in Germany quite rapidly than any other country. And, uh, but like, and the death rate were like not corresponding to that in Germany. The reason could be like the young people are getting infected and they are like trying to flatten the curve, early detection only. But how like at so such early stage like she could be like able to say 70% of the population was it only for German population she was saying or the whole? No, no the entire population of the entire world will get this virus. Uh, this is just yeah. the first wave. In the second wave that will be even more deadlier. I don't want to sound pessimistic but uh, if you no, see the 1980 flu pandemic and uh, also the swine flu uh, it came in three waves. So the second wave was the most dangerous. So what you are seeing is not the first wave. When the winter comes, then again, it will unleash hell. So it's not that every person will get it. All you need to do is keep calm, keep a positive attitude, and then prepare your immune system. You will get yeah. the virus so that your immune yeah. system will work. So no, don't worry not, about yeah. the statistics. Don't worry yeah. about the statistics. Be positive. Because 
because we have information that intermediate host the virus in the intermediate host is less you know severe than in humans so you never know that it was dormant i mean dormant and it can also just come as a second wave you know with more pronounced severe effects yeah i mean so yeah yeah when you all, when you separately talk about germany why why we have more cases here is is just the number of tests uh, i was telling about my friend's case right so my friend is from spain he got positive in spain and he was telling that in spain there are only 5% of the people that they are going for tests remaining all the government health system doesn't have capacity whereas in germany 67% of the people they are testing so if if for example if you want to compare germany with spain spain should have 1 million cases as of now and more than 20 to 30000 deaths only thing is it's not being reported in germany it's everything is being reported because they are doing a lot of tests and uh, actually compared to germany france is having a big problem with number of cases to number of death ratio germany has more number of cases but less number of deaths yeah it's just even testing yeah but but uh, i mean on the positive note let's hope that some kind of medicines will be available with with certain with within a short span of time let's say 3 months or something until then we need to protect ourselves in quarantine and wherever we yes, go sir. out we need to maintain social distancing measures yeah I have one more question if nobody else. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. So because some of like governments, like uh, we know, like the some of like uh, good countries, they are like not letting, like not they did not go for the complete lockdown. Maybe first business, like they do not want to shut their business, like US, UK, Sweden, these countries. Mm -hmm. Second thing was their idea was that let the people get infected and immune for the virus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're talking about the herd immunity. Mm -hmm. Herd immunity concept only works with vaccines, ma'am. It doesn't work with such a dangerous virus like uh, SARS. People have see now uh, Boris Johnson has tested positive, so it yeah. was uh, UK which uh, said that okay, we'll go for uh, herd immunity and all. Then after a paper that came from Imperial College London that around uh, five lakh deaths will happen in UK and uh, 2.2 million deaths will happen in US. After that, they changed their mindset. So the herd immunity concept. It does not work doesn't with work. pandemics. It doesn't yeah. work with pandemics, and it is yeah, the so most. People like, who get the virus, they die. Like, yeah, they will, they will die because of the cardiac complications and other cytokine response. So this is a foolish idea that has put forward, and uh, scientists have already said that does, that doesn't make any sense. And Britain will pay price for price for it, unfortunately. Yeah. But they are also going for a complete lockdown soon. Yeah, soon, like yeah, but maybe. Yeah, I mean, irrespective of countries or governments, uh, since we know that, uh, it's like us and our families, we need to self-isolate. That's a, that's the best thing that we yeah. The more responsible we are as individuals, the more uh, we can protect ourselves. We cannot depend on anybody. Every person it's not about you. I mean, it's elderly people in the house that they need to be protected, you know. So yeah. just be, yeah. So Anand, uh, thank you all for taking your precious time to educate me. I look forward for the recorded version, which I can share with my circle to spread the legitimate awareness. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. And thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for organizing. I thank just you. have a quick question, rather than yeah. a question. So, uh, uh, we'll have a small talk with Dr. Vimudi. So, primary, yeah, thank you for your presentation and giving some information how we can use uh, disinfectant at home. Uh, I just wanted to share my experience uh, because I just traveled in the first week of March from India and my wife and I, we were really skeptic about this travel, but we had to because we have an infant child along with us. And uh, we uh, consulted uh, and, uh, a family uh, which, which have been uh, doing special work and providing Ayurvedic treatments uh, to people in that community. And we were told to uh, take this Parijata leaf along with us. And in fact, uh, we were also told how to make the medicine, just boil that in water, bring it one third and you can consume one or uh, to the max one teaspoon for elderly people and half for youngsters. So we, we took that, it was really bitter, but uh, what we were told that it it builds the immune system rapidly just like how uh, it does for the uh, platelets uh, for the uh, papaya leaf so we we took that also so do you have any information on this about the parijatal 
Uh, I think you are. Uh, I don't have actually because I'm not an. We are not Ayurved, but yeah, our Ayurvedic traditional medicine has a lot of these bioactive agents like tulsi. We have, oh, and you can use a neem concoction. You can take a neem bark or a neem uh, branch and then boil it. Boil it in water and then you drink that. Any fever, not just corona. It any fever. It's a. Uh, so obviously it will uh, kill that virus. So that neem works. Uh, I I think someone has turned on the mic, so it was kind of disturbance. I don't know who is on. I turned it off. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Anand, you have used the uh, Parija flower or just the leaf? Uh, okay, we both actually. Mm -hmm. Angri, uh, do you get that? Sorry? Uh, we have we used, used both the leaf, the leaf and the flower. flower. How, yes. much, how, how much like a handful? You can you explain the preparation? Uh, okay, uh, I have to uh, interject. Um, it's my wife who prepared, and her name is Samprita. Samprita. Hello. Um, uh, yeah. Um, it's like we took at an equal amount of leaf and leaves and flowers, like maybe five leaves and the flowers, and uh, just if you have added like three cups of water to it, into it, just boil until it becomes one. So you will see, uh, you know, kind of, um, I mean, you rigorously boil it, uh, and then it turns like brown, like kashayam kind of a thing, and uh, very bitter in taste. And you just drink like um, two spoons for elderly, like all of us, and for the infant maybe a uh, one fourth or maybe a little, uh, very little amount. Um, and it's very bitter too, and uh, too much consumption is not good. But later, I also did a bit of research around this, and I saw that this is used in a lot of Ayurvedic medicine, which is related to respiratory and uh, other immune system you know, medicines. They use parchanta flower and leaf. Yeah, I just came across that it has some antibacterial, anti-inflammatory functions. Yes, it's so, made right for the yeah. study yeah, body. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah so madam, uh, you were taking two teaspoons twice a day or once a day? No, we just took once before traveling and I, we also bought few flowers and the leaves and uh, we wanted to give it to our friends. But as soon as we came to Germany, it was uh, like, you know, the things were bad and we couldn't meet anybody. Then I made a kachayam and I have kept it in the fridge. But I'm not sure whether I should consume it again or not. Okay. Huh. So now my simple question. Thank you. Thank you for no, sharing everything. Now another question. Uh, no, but Doctor Anand. Hello. Uh, yes. Hello. He's on. Yeah, yeah, so, I'm, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what I want to know is that now, since you have returned to India from uh, India to Germany, is the TB over? Okay. Yeah. So I, I request all of them to turn off the microphones so that she can Falguni can speak and the rest, you know, after that you can turn on. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So I wanted to know that since is it three weeks are over since you have returned from India? Yes. Uh, we, we came. Uh, it's twenty five days now. It's twenty five days now. Yes. And you never had any cold, flu, nothing. All these days, when we travel, like oh. usually when we travel from India to uh, Germany, at the first two days we kind of have a you know the cough or, or not cough like a cold or maybe due to the weather. Yes. So that's we yes. had it. yeah we had it we had it there was no like we had a, a, the first two days were like bit okay oh we have I mean bit of skeptical really, you know like after traveling my flight and oh. then hearing the news maybe it's psychological as well we were feeling like oh my god our craft. And our, we have a like Anna, we have a ten months old baby, so we also felt that oh maybe she has a running nose and so on. But then we were fine after two days. Yeah. This is very uh, good information you have shared. Thank you very much. And uh, I think there is no problem if you have it from the fridge, but warm it a little bit and have because it will still have hold some medicinal properties. 
थैंक यू हेलो यस यस आई गॉट इट थैंक 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 यू 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 वेरी वेरी मच मच या बाय डॉक्टर जस्ट गो थ्रू द अदर पॉइंट्स आई विल क्लोज द माइक ओके सो वेट वेयर आर वी नाउ आई थिंक दीप्ति हैज अ क्वेश्चन अबाउट हंटा वायरस Hanta virus, no need to worry. I have the Can you just best explain? experience working with Hanta virus. Yeah, the Hanta virus only spreads through the saliva or uh, fecal matter or the urine of any of the rodents. So that is not a new thing. I have worked with rodents, and uh, just precaution that you need to take is don't uh, touch it with your bare hands, wear gloves or whatever. So if it bites, you will get that virus. But then it is not a new virus; it is an old virus. so the case in china maybe because it's a, it's in a different province since the maybe because the person might have weakened immune system due to the corona and he, might, he must have uh, recovered from it and then he must have come into contact with it otherwise uh, you don't have to worry about hanta virus it doesn't spread like that it's a hemorrhagic fever with a high mortality rate but it doesn't spread like uh, corona or anything so don't believe anything about uh, hanta virus or don't panic about it We have one virus to panic. That is enough. Uh, don't panic about Hanta virus. Mm. And and Anant, any important suggestions for those who are going for out for essential services? So this is from Meena, my sister. She is a postal clerk, and she she has she comes under essential services. She goes to office every day. And what are the measures that she need to take care? Uh, maintain social distancing that is the first thing and then uh, if you can get hold of a mask since it is under essential services if you can get hold of a mask then that will be better and uh, and gloves would be have good. a hand sanitizer and gloves will be better surgical gloves will be available anywhere and uh, hand sanitizer would be better or prepare your own hand sanitizer mm. turmeric in water and uh, have it because uh, she will be touching a lot of surfaces and all mm-hmm. so this is not the end this is just the beginning so from now on you we all have to be very very careful about what we touch whom we touch the way we touch and all those things mm-hmm. so be very careful and maintain a distance don't get too close to people yeah though when you talk especially uh, at least maintain 1 meter distance 6 feet is 1 meter so maintain a meter distance maintain social distancing very strictly mm mm-hmm. Okay. Next. 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 Yeah. Uh, hey, Jagdish. Uh, yeah. Uh, Samrita has one quick question. Yeah. Uh, if you have. Go ahead, uh, Samrita. Uh. Yeah. Uh, the question is like, my dad is, um, uh, you know, undergoing uh, dialysis because is, uh, you know, because of the kidney failure issue, mm-hmm. and uh, he has twice uh, a week. dialysis and uh, there is no way that we can stop this and he has to visit the you know the hospital where he's going through this and uh, i mean we take him in the private vehicle and wait there and bring him back but still um is there something that we have to take care in addition because even if he doesn't want to come in contact he comes in contact with you know at least couple of people at hospital uh, i mean people are taking the uh, yeah. uh, still so i mean it's um it's a bit tricky situation for us because he gets back, I mean, we are here and uh, when we he gets back home it's my sister's family who's with him and then we have two uh, kids as well in the family and uh, you know i mean he doesn't have any symptom or anything but this procedure has to go on so do you have any additional uh, measures or something that we have to really consider Uh, where does he stay? Uh, are you based in from Hyderabad? No, Udupi, Karnataka. Udupi, Karnataka. So, uh, where uh, apart from the, I think not every hospital has been given the designated coronavirus thing. So, uh, not every uh, hospital should be uh, attending the coronavirus patients. But the problem is that people are attending to. So that is one danger and. Uh, i don't want to uh, create a sense of panic or something but uh, your father is a very high risk patient mm-hmm. yeah, very yeah, high risk because corona virus also, corona virus also shut down your kidney shuts down your kidney so uh, that is one danger so he comes under the high risk category 
so make sure that he doesn't come into contact with anybody and uh, people who are taking care of him they have to maintain the social distancing with as much strictness as possible as much strictness yeah. as possible they need if to possible, keep away, I mean, uh, if possible just to try to isolate him you know from the rest of the people moving around so that you know something a, a place where he can only you know quarantine himself kind of thing if you have a separate room or something people like that people are attending to doctors are attending to upper respiratory tract infections and uh, still people have doubts whether it is corona or not a corona or anything so that is one issue so that is creating a lot of confusion in people and a lot of anxiety and tension in people so, so uh, protect him with mm-hmm. is panic and just take care yeah. take absolute precaution yeah protect him all yeah. the time with a mask and and gloves yeah mm-hmm. yes he is doing that. and also in the hospitals they have closed uh, what do you call the opd uh, it's more like this regular patients who have to go through this like dialysis and so on yes, and yes. what can see yeah he said the very oh, sorry go on so just monitor for the symptoms you know on a daily basis and try to keep him uh, like you know isolated from the rest of the people you know moving around or something like that mm, yeah yes and actually, make sure of his uh, health condition on a daily basis actually it is the people who are around him who is ta- who are taking care of him uh, they should be very very careful because the, through them uh, he'll get it most probably if if he gets it it is through them so they have to exercise caution that is the reason why government is saying oh just because you have an immune system and so you just because you are young don't go out because you will be infecting people of uh, little ages and also old age people so mm-hmm. don't do that don't be a hero mm-hmm. just like that just yeah, yeah. at home one. everybody is taking a precaution and you know they are very careful like this is um, kind of which is unstoppable now we have to take him to the hospital and you know it has to go through and yes. uh, taking care it's just a kind of sense of a, not panic i would say anxiety for uh, the family members you know whenever he goes out and then when he's back i mean he's absolutely doing fine uh, no issues and uh, uh, mentally he's going out alone pardon me he's going no, out alone no 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 we are taking him like uh, either uh, you know my brother in law i mean we are driving him by a private car and then coming back so not okay. using okay. only to the hospital and home that's it yes. don't let yes. him anyway Outside. don't let him yeah, anywhere outside for mm-hmm. strict home quarantine that's it yes yes till this subsides not it will not subside within a month or so the second wave will hit when as soon as the rains will start because in udupi and all there are lot of uh, yeah it is uttara kannada dakshina kannada district so it is coastal area so you will have lot of rains and again this will there are fears that it will become endemic and it will be a seasonal so you have to be very careful as long as let's see uh, unless the medication is there uh, mm-hmm. then you can you can try the preventive medications but uh, again uh, you have to consult the doctor because he has the kidney issue yes so yes you cannot so just take uh, ayurvedic medicine without any doctor's prescription because ayurvedic medicine uh, not many can take it because it it has problem yeah, yeah he can't somebody can't cannot, somebody yeah cannot creatinine take. level is very bad so he cannot take any of ayurvedic uh, which can yeah, yeah. that is that is the only way to protect right now ayurvedic medicine then homeo is also available right now i suppose arsenic album or that is what they are doctors are uh, using it so consult a doctor if you are so worried about it but then care, take as much care as possible yeah hello doctor hey doctor hello yeah please go ahead yeah uh, so i'm dr falk here yeah i practice homeopathy so what you can do is take arsenic al 200 okay arsenic al 200 once a day for 3 days and uh, that would li- like anybody can take it and influenza num is another homeopathic medicine if you have flu like symptoms you can start it immediately once a day and then continue with arsenic do you want me to type this and send it across yes i was about yes. to say that doctor that would be helpful yeah 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 i'll just send it huh thank you but he has an ongoing like the medication mm-hmm. uh, which are that, already that, on the high dose so that, that, that doesn't that doesn't help you homeo doesn't need to be not uh, yeah yeah it will yeah. just help him you know with his other symptoms yes homeo okay. doesn't need to be with anything so homeo is very safe so use it everybody are mm-hmm. focusing on either that or ayurvedic uh, this thing okay please 
Yeah, yeah. I think. Yes, I think thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Anand, when when uh, Dr. Falguna types, please copy it because once I close the seminar, everything will be gone. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's move forward because the time is running. So, what self self quarantine measures in affected person should be taken? Special food care and to improve the immunity. So, especially with the affected yes, people, yes, what are the yes, measures yes, to be yes, taken? Just take anything homemade. Just take anything homemade. Improve your vitamin C. If you have vitamin D, take all vitamins, multivitamins, or uh, everything. Just take everything home cooked. That's it. Uh, anything home cooked will improve your immune system. Yeah, uh, Dr. Falguni, I mean, when you when you tell about arsenic album, how many pills one has to take? Because these are Ayurveda. Some people say it's uh, eight tablets, ten tablets. No, 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 no. I think uh, if they are small, I think ten to fifteen, I suppose, generally, because I take homeo. Otherwise, if they are big, I think two or three. I think she'll type anyway. Okay. Yeah, wait. Yeah, waiting. Usha. I think she. Is, I think she is in integrated medicine group. I can ask her anyway. Okay, very good. Usha, is it possible to detect COVID-19 in initial stages of infection? Uh, uh, I mean, the thing is that you should have detectable viral load in your nose swab. So how the COVID-19 is detected is that they they take a nose swab or throat swab. And uh, so, when you take the swab and do RNA for doing PCR, qPCR especially, qRT-PCR, there you need to have detectable viral load. So, um, I don't know. I mean, and 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 the one more thing is that people need to have symptoms to go to COVID-19 detection because it's not a regular yeah. test. Yeah, it's not a regular test that you you just call the doctor or go to the doctor and ask them to do a test. They won't do it. Because the health system is severely heavily burdened, and uh, in, in it also depends on where, which country, which place you live. So that's why in the initial stages of infection, as of now, it's not possible. Governments won't do it. Even the private hospitals won't do it. And the, the only way that you go is through symptoms when you have it. Okay. Uh, thanks for putting your time and educating information. Okay, Suresh, thanks for your time and the topics we. Put. Okay, some other questions. Uh, Suresh has given quarantine.in for somebody who who wants to know about about details. Thanks, Suresh. Uh, put your pin code. Okay. 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 Mm. Okay. Anand is Dr. Falguni has typed arsenic album 200 three pills once a day for three days in case slight three pills twice a day. What? There is a YouTube link also. Okay. Uh, you have have everything, so I can I'll copy. Okay. Okay. Anand, did you copy paste it? Huh? Yeah, I'm doing it. Just yes. Hold on. Yes, I did. Thank you. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. Even it will be helpful for me also. Then. Yeah. Okay. So whoever needs it, please copy copy these things or take a screenshot. Okay, ah, and Dr. Falguni also gave YouTube the link is prescription protection mantra. Okay, so that's all, uh, everyone. Yeah. It's it's a, it was a really a pleasure to host uh, such kind of informative web webinar to everybody. Whenever if you have any questions, please shoot us an email to Shanmu Anand or, or me. Uh, I do not have much of the the medical background to understand it deep, but I know a little bit because we three are classmates. We all studied animal biotechnology in Hyderabad. Then we moved for different uh, streams of PhDs, so we understand a little bit. And uh, also thanks to Anant and Shanmukh, all participants, everybody, for making this webinar a, a, a good success. I mean, we have a, we had around 40 participants today, so it's one of the nice webinars that we have done. Yeah, thanks, thank everyone. you, everyone. Yeah, stay safe thank and you, healthy. Everyone. See you. See you then. Uh, uh, yeah. I hope no one has any questions, right? If there are any questions, feel free to ask. Maybe two more minutes. Yeah, we will post the video soon. Probably it was a bit lengthy, though, so then we could, we should, no, uh, just yeah. cut it short as so that 15 minutes may be appropriate for sharing. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. If there are no questions, then take care, everyone. Stay safe. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.